Welcome to episode 60 of the Positive on Publishing podcast. This podcast aims to inspire you with information to allow you to pursue your creative life with a smile on your face. I'm your host, Catherine Guilet. Learn more about my work at makeeverythingfun.com. My beautiful guest today, and uh, Anna, we're going to be doing this as a video as well as audio. So it's really funny. I'm in my ski clothes, um, but Anna <laughs> is looking glamorous. So this is Dr. Anna Kabeca looking beautiful. Um, Dr. Kabeca has reached hundreds of thousands of women around the globe, inspiring them to reclaim their optimal health. She allows women to realize they can journey through menopause and find more purpose and pleasure than they ever dreamed possible. I can't wait to talk about that and about your publishing journey. So welcome to the show, Anna. Oh, so great to be here with you. And I knew we were going to have fun. We've already had fun. <laughs> We, that's what this is all about. And I am so excited about your new book. I meant to say that you are the author for those watching the video version of The Hormone Fix, which I got from Anna when we saw each other live in person last year in 2019, and I devoured it. Um, such a great book and so important because I think we can get older and better. And the idea of having more pleasure and purpose in life as we move through these years, let's start there. And, and then we'll also talk about your new book that's coming out, Keto Green 16. But really just since we're going to be talking about the publishing journey and some tidbits about the hormone fix and working with the same publisher again to do Keto Green, let's, um, let's kind of talk about some of the amazing takeaways from the hormone fix. Yeah, well, I think the first and foremost, it, it takes more than hormones to fix our hormones. And, you know, I'm a gynecologist by training. I trained at Emory University. And one of the things is that we learn, we focus our years of our education, prime life, studying estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, even DHEA. But those aren't the major hormones that really are needle moving and especially important as we get older. And the major hormones are insulin cortisol and oxytocin, oxytocin being the hormone of love, bonding, connection, fun, laughter, play, all the reasons why we have to bring more fun into our life. So, and, and that brings more passion into our life. So kind of in this, the transition, I, I always say I've been through menopause twice because I was early diagnosed with early menopause when I was 39. And I was told I was infertile. I had premature ovarian insufficiency. I mean, I'm a gynecologist. I know I had no response to the highest doses of injectable fertility meds. So, you know, you're given a diagnosis by your physicians or yourself and your esteemed colleagues. And you're like, oh man, there's no, you know, how can this be it? That was my response. Like, how can this have happened? How can this be it? And so that really took me on a journey around the world. And, and I reversed it. I became pregnant at 41, had my beautiful daughter, Ava Marie. So I'm 53 with an 11 year old. And it's really important to keep healthy hormones at this stage, especially. But at age 48, I went through this really rough time too, where I became both mom and dad and, you know, a primary breadwinner and transitioning from my medical practice to really uh, take care of my kids. And um, and that kind of helped me redefine myself and my business life and give me the fuel to write, which I think is, is definitely my life's work, the hormone fix. So up till today. And so this has been a, um, it's been a journey, but able to correct our hormonal imbalances and able to gain clarity and wisdom and energy and passion. And like I, when I was 48, I had at 47, I would never have imagined I'd have the mental clarity to even be able to write a book. And so now we're on my second one coming out May 5th, Keto Green 16. Well, so what I like to do is pull out fun nug nuggets that kind of summarize and, and direct the conversation in a fun way. And I will, I want to talk about fun nugget number one, which is that, you know, a hormone fix isn't necessarily just about the hormones that we all hear about estrogen, testosterone, et cetera. They're about sort of master controls, the insulin, the cortisol and oxytocin. And let's with fun nugget number one, Let's dive into oxytocin because um, my friend and mentor, 
uh, Marcy Shimoff always talks about the importance of getting an oxytocin hit. And um, I, I say to my husband, we have this puppy, this brand new puppy. He's a Pomsky and he is just so cute. And I, I say to my husband, I'm like, I need, a, I need an oxytocin hit. And I will just grab him and I will like cuddle with him. And I just feel so warm and fuzzy. And, I, and I'm pretty sure that I'm getting an oxytocin hit, um, but I could be wrong. And so I wanted you to talk a little bit about that and, and maybe how we can all get some more oxytocin hits. Oh yeah, absolutely. There's, uh, you're definitely getting an oxytocin hit. Certainly puppies, pets, laughter, play, passion, you know, intimacy, all of that increases oxytocin giving, being charitable, you know, donating time, tithing or talents, you know, I mean, those are things that can also improve our sense of our boost up our oxytocin. So that gives us this feeling of well being. Now, most women would have heard of oxytocin in the form of pitocin, in labor, we're given IV pitocin, which is actually oxytocin to help stimulate contractions of our uterus to help deliver the baby. Well, when we, as um, uh, those of us who had this experience of delivering this baby that just created so much pain and havoc in our body, and yet we look at this child and think, oh my God, you are the most precious, unbelievable amazing thing with words could never express the feelings that we feel for this child, right? That bonding and imprinting and all those things that develop at that time, we're flooded with oxytocin. That's part of, part of the nature of, um, of childbirth. And, and when we orgasm, oxytocin, when we hug, kiss, caress with pleasure, we get more hits of oxytocin. And absolutely, we need to have more oxytocin in our life. And so what if we don't have enough oxytocin? And I, I believe that you referred to her, but Candace Pert, right? And Mole Molecules of Emotion talks about the importance of, you know, orgasm. And it's like, yay, somebody finally put this in a, in a more medically related book. Um, but what happens when we don't have enough oxytocin in our life? Yeah, and I definitely go into that a lot in chapter eight in my book, because when um, in my life, what happened, you know, post my early menopause and trauma that we experienced in our family, I certainly was experienced burned out, experienced uh, extreme stress and grief and trauma and PTSD and what happens is over time. And I talk about this in chapter eight, the cortisol oxytocin disconnect for a while cortisol's up but then the brain's like stop frying me out let's suppress this cortisol and with that suppression oxytocin also goes down and so you're what that feels like it feels like burnout it feels like you go into a restaurant you see people you know and you're like i don't see anyone i am completely invisible right i don't know anyone i don't recognize anyone we isolate ourselves more and more De have feelings of depression, lack that connection, that intimacy. We, you know, don't look at people in the eyes anymore. And, um, and it can feel, you know, it's very isolating burnout. It's a perfect, you know, to say that we're burnt out, we stop doing the things that we love to do. It's an oxytocin deficiency. Mm. So important to be frank with that and that it happens to all of us. I mean, I can't tell you how many people I, you know, I talk to that tell me about their rock bottom moments and it often happens multiple times in life and life is truly a journey, journey of challenges and, and, and lessons and, um, but we need to have strategies. So the idea of understanding the insulin and the cortisol and the oxytocin responses that it's a biochemical thing sometimes. So folks go out, get yourself a puppy, <laughs> watch some funny um, YouTube videos, play, laugh, sing, dance. Um, and we're going to go on to fun nugget too, because I do want to get into the writing journey and there might be a segue here, but you said something really important about how, and this, that hormones are related to our mental clarity. You said something about how, you know, years ago, you, you might not have, have felt that you had the mental clarity as related to hormones to write a book. So can you tell us about what happens and how that cascade in the body occurs, where if your hormones are out of whack, all of a sudden you might have brain fog or tell us kind of what happened in your personal story. Yeah. Well, you know, and this is why I am so passionate about getting this message out, Catherine, because, you know, here I am, I'm, you know, 
uh, Emory University trained, you know, been through medical school. I don't think I missed any classes of significance, but like, I did not know this. I did not understand the menopausal transition. We are not equipped as physicians for supporting women during this time and especially post-trauma, right? And, and, and in today's modern medical visits, we have such a brief amount of time with our, you know, white coat beloved physician that there's not much time to really dig into what's what's happening here. And so if I hadn't experienced it personally, you know, twice essentially with a menopausal transition, I, I wouldn't have figured it out. But what I know now, so what happens for many of us as we're going through this transition, it's not just the menstrual irregularities, the heavy bleeding, the breakthrough bleeding, the, the different lengths of your cycle. It's also anxiety, insomnia, mood swings, irritability. Women will say, I don't know who this monster is that's showing up instead of me, right? Impatience and relationship conflict, decreased libido, difficulty with orgasm, vaginal dryness. And that's a whole area that I specialize in, right? We want, we want to take care of the vagina. It's essential for life. So we will you know, advocate there. And and also, you know, the other, so the neurologic symptoms. So we enter age 35 to 55, a period of neuroendocrine vulnerability. And what I didn't know, what I learned after like struggling with brain fog, these memory issues, I, when I shifted to a keto diet, to my keto green, keto alkaline way of eating and living, so it's more than it, what we eat, it's how we live as well. So when I shifted, I had such a lifting, like the veils opened, right? The cloud lifted. And um, and it just created this energized enlightenment is what I like to call it. I just felt higher, higher connected, more grounded, spiritually more aware and focused. And what I found, the reason is, as we go through this menopausal transition, our primary hormones, sex steroids, progesterone, estrogen, testosterone, they're all declining, but especially progesterone. And that's the precursor to our adrenal DHEA hormone, as well as estrogen. Well, for our brain is going to use glucose for fuel or ketones for fuel. So the use of glucose for fuel in the brain is an estrogen dependent phenomenon. So as we can now witness a decreased ability to use glucose as a fuel for the brain and an increase in these neuroendocrine symptoms at the same time, it's a fuel problem. And so we have to shift to ketones. And as we shift to using ketones for fuel, we become more insulin sensitive, less inflamed, more balance, the weight starts sliding back off if we've gained weight and just feel healthier and stronger. And so, and that, that whole big part of, you know, brain clarity and Catherine, something for me, you know, I, I went to med school, I did master's work. I've been a student for life. I'm still highly, um, you know, I just love it. But when I was going through this time period around that 45 to 48 time period. I mean, my memory was off. And for someone who I had a perfect visual memory and losing my memory was like losing my mind. You know what I mean? And so many women are like, will tell me as their, as their doctor, Dr. Ann, I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm just forgetting things, but I guess that sometimes, you know, or I'm, you know, just getting older and this is what I'm to expect. And I'm like, no, it's a fuel problem. We have to shift from glucose, shift from your standard American diet. Let's stop the grains, stop the carbs and shift to the keto green way. And that makes all the difference in the world. They'll come back in two weeks and be like 90% better. I have to pull out a nugget here because that the idea that we in this age group, 35 to 55 are, you know, neuroendocrinologically speaking vulnerable yes. um, is important to underline here. And I wanted to ask you, is this for both men and women or just the women that are going through menopause? Definitely women. Okay. Definitely women. Um, men have 10 times as much testosterone as women, and they actually have an increased no amount of estrogen in the brain than women. We rely on our ovaries for estrogen production. Men rely on testosterone to estrogen conversion for the most part. Okay. So women are especially vulnerable. Vulnerable, okay. especially to... vulnerable. And that okay. may be why we have over two times as much Alzheimer's as men. We got to change that. 
Absolutely. And so then another nugget here is that, you know, the idea of memory and mood and, and how those are fluctuating and maybe not going in directions that we are very happy about, it relates to the fuel source, right? So, you know, pretty basic stuff around, um, you know, glucose and ketones, but everybody might not understand that, that there is this, you know, the brain really, it doesn't take carbs <laughs> to, or, or like any from a macronutrient thing, everything has to either be glucose or ketones, right? And, you know, ketones, I think, you know, really got popular. Remember the, um, remember the diet, it was, uh, it was Atkins, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And you're getting into ketosis and it's great because then you're not hungry, but you have this slant we can kind of get into the, the keto green 16 and how it's different. What was so problematic and one day people feel so icky about those diets is yeah, after a while you weren't hungry because you're producing ketones and that would, um, you know, suppress your appetite and it was easy to lose weight, but you just started to feel icky after a while. I mean, with all of that, saturated fat and all that meat, which does make you, you know, acidic. And you mentioned, you know, increasing the alkaline balance in the body. So let's, let's talk about, so your journey as an author yourself was, wait a minute, it's like a personal thing. And for people that are listening, it's so important for, for authors, aspiring authors to realize that it is that personal story. And you certainly include that in what you write about. And that's what, that's what draws people into it is this is exactly what you went through. You were like, where is my mood memory? Um, realizing it's about a food source, the, for, the, the hormone fix truly is a, is a life work and legacy. But to take it another step further, to dive into that nugget around memory and mood as related to fuel source yeah. is so key. So, so let's move into your, your latest book because it's so exciting that you've done that. Yeah. So it's really like the, the hormone fix is the, you know, everyone needs to read the hormone fix and it is the, the, like I said, my life's work. And then keto green 16 is just taking it a bit further and really accelerating results, accelerating weight loss, getting that clarity. It's like, let's do keto green 16. The number 16 has a lot of great meeting meanings right here. It's for 16 hour intermittent fast time frame as well as a 16 day plan, which we could do the first 16 days of every month, you know, and, and do it as a group, do it as a community, do it as a Bible study, do it, you know, I mean, do it part of our small groups, whatever it may be our workplaces. I really wanted to build this into like a community program. So we're not alone and we have that accountability in real time, even though we have our keto green community group online. But um, so the concept was, so here I was age 48, right? I'd, I'd worked through reverse infertility, lost over 80 pounds, kept it off for nearly a decade. And, and the weight started coming back on and the brain fog was there. And I was like, okay, I know I have to restrict carbs. I'm going to go keto because that is going to help me with the weight loss. But I experienced exactly what you were talking about. Beyond the icky feeling, I felt I was going keto crazy keto crazy. I was irritable, agitated, did not like the woman I was, especially with teenagers and one in elementary school. It was not a good place to be. And I, I had to ask myself, why? What's going on physiologically? Because physiology affects behavior. Why am I acting this way? What's going on? And I just did what I have my patients do, check urine pH. I was acidic as acidic as the paper would read. And then I just said, okay, well, let me work on my alkalinizers. I doubled up, tripled up on my mighty maca energy elixir. And I added in additional greens, low carbohydrate greens, and really focused on that along with, you know, really healthy choices of keto foods of healthy fats and healthy proteins. And so when I, um, as I increased my urine pH, which is another vital sign, it is as important to check as our pulse, our blood pressure, our weight. It really is. Urinary pH is another vital sign to tell us how is our body reacting to our environment and our nourishment. Because when we're stressed, our urinary pH will become acidic. And I realized that. I had no idea. I mean, I, you know, certainly I know renal physiology, but no, I had no idea. So when we're stressed, cortisol affects the hydrogen ions, it affects our kidneys. And so our urine becomes more acidic just from stress. But I realized that because the mornings I would walk on the beach or get up and do my meditation or gratitude journaling, I was more alkaline all day. So as I witnessed that pattern, it was another light bulb, another aha moment. It's not just about what we eat. That's why diets fail. That's why so many, what do they say? 93% of diets fail because the reason it's not just about what we eat. 
we have to have the disciplines and practices in place to improve the quality of our life, which improves our willpower and our staying power. Well, I will tell you that whole idea of your pH changing based on stress management techniques is enough to kick me in the pants to, um, to go out and get some urine test strips. And you have some amazing ones on your website because they do, they actually test ketones and the the pH. pH. So you don't have to have two different ones, which is great if you're doing that program. Um, but yeah, yeah, also just, you know, to do that meditation or to do that walk on the beach or to do that, you know, even if you're in the middle of a busy city, just to take a moment to look up at the sky and have some gratitude. Um, that's a, that's a wonderful, um, motivating force. And you mentioned something about how this book is building a community. And I wanted to to switch because so many people listen to this podcast and they're going to get all this great, um, recommendations from this interview about how to be healthier and to manage stress, which is a total extra bonus. But a lot of people are also listening for how they can, you know, follow your path and, and publish their life's work and leave a legacy like you are. So I wanted to pull out this nugget around a book can create a community or can build a community because a really important force. I mean, you know, in the world of health, Dan Buettner in the five blue zones, there's not a magic berry in the blue zones. There's community and social connection and purpose. So um, share with us how you're building a community. And, and I think that's some secret sauce that you have there. Well, I think because I recognize how important it is and community, a healthy community increases oxytocin. And that's that longevity hormone. Like we said in the blue zones, absolutely. It is the longevity hormone. And so what I really is aspire to do with Keto Green, like we have our Keto Green Facebook community and I wanted, and that was great. So everyone who read the hormone fix and they're doing it and, and doing some work groups and small groups, things like that, they're creating some community, but the online community was great. I wanted something more physical than that. I want people to really bring it into their homes, their families, do it together and, you know, bring it into their communities because that is going to make our lives a lot easier for the next generation. Number one, I want my kids to be surrounded by other families that are doing what I'm doing and we're not the odd ones because we're, you know, not eating bagels and pizza and sandwiches every day. So tell me about that, how to create a community that goes beyond Facebook and gets into, you know, the physical communities, community centers, any places that people gather. Yeah, well, with um, Keto Green 16, there's a companion guide that gives you the just the, the step-by-step way to bring it, you know, to do it together to just set your intentions, set your um, goals, do your baseline numbers, weights, measurements. You know, if you have your lab work, let's get those in. So you monitor it and then just follow the plan together. So ideally, like today we have a huge batch of, of cabbage soup that we're doing some keto green cabbage soup and I'm sharing it with a few other women that are following my program. And so that's like a fun way to do it. And like often I'll make a big thing of bone broth and who wants bone broth and everyone comes over. And so creating that reminds me of growing up in small town, Pennsylvania, my mom being the, you know, the one who's cook, you can smell the food from the road and everyone's stopping over to, say hi and, and have a bite to eat. So that's kind of what I really hope to create in a very helpful way where food is medicine, but it's also food. I mean, it's the, it's, it is an elixir and community, healthy community. I just feel a strong need to recreate it. That is such an inspiring idea because it addresses so many issues you know, one being that, you know, sometimes we think of food as being love. And so that means, you know, bringing the neighbor some cupcakes or cookies. But what you're talking about is that love can be healthy food and, and bringing people together. Oh my gosh. I mean, it reminds me that, you know, that Great Britain has recently announced a minister for loneliness. Like it is, it, loneliness is such a huge factor in our lives. Maybe it has to do with the fact that, so much is done remotely and so much is done over the computer and internet um, that it tends to separate people. But what you're saying is this is, you know, when you share healthy food, it has to be something that's physical. 
So can people through the Keto Green um, Facebook community, do they like figure out where they are geographically and, and go from there? Or how does it sort of tactically work because it's a brilliant and inspiring idea. Yeah. So the goal is that, you know, leaders amongst us will initiate it into their workplace so that they can get a copy of the book and bring it to work, follow the checklist, the plan, and and just kind of just start doing it together. So, okay, here's the next 16 days. And ideally, like, here are some recipes you can do in bulk to share. And, you know, one person or another person can take that response, that can be shared responsibility. So you're not feeling like I've got to do all these recipes for, you know, 16 days. And the way I do Keto Green 16 too, is also so like a dinner can be a leftover, leftover lunch the next day. And because I I know how busy things get, and it's really important to be healthy, but also visualizing the Keto Green plate. And this Keto Green 16 has a lot of beautiful images in it. Our publisher went above and beyond and added colored inserts of some of my recipes. So I was really excited about that. So you get the visual with it too. What does a Keto Green plate look like? But again, always remembering it's beyond that. So are we checking off our exercise? Are we checking off our water? Are we checking off our oxytocin activity for today? Right? We definitely have to check that box. And so, okay, you mentioned the corporate, well, um, the, the corporate workspace. And I have, I'm going to have to send the link of this interview to my friends over at Wellcoa. I'm a faculty there. So Wellcoa is the Wellness Council of America. And there's all these um, companies that are part, um, that are affiliated with Wellcoa, where they really want to have these um, healthy workplaces. And it's so funny because, you know, we're both moms and I really feel like, you know, workplaces are just, you know, there were, we're just kids grown up, gone to work. So it's like the parallel of kids being in school. And I've done a lot of work in schools and trying to get healthier options in schools. Well, you're doing this work to get healthier options in the workplace. And it would be a dream. Can you imagine if we were able to have like slow cookers all over corporate America that were um, that were simmering with bone broth with, you know, healthy dark greens in there. And people could just walk into, instead of the water cooler, it's the bone broth. <laughs> I so love that. Her. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Why not? I mean, seriously, I, I love that idea and how healthy, you know, and it's really important. The reason I wanted it to go into corporate because I had uh, an interview and I, I think it was like from people.com and they asked me, they said, well, you know, they're, um, with uh, menopause being such an issue, there are some uh, businesses that are uh, giving time off for menopause or menopause breaks or something like that. And I'm like, we just have to shift the fuel. So those of us like in that corporate space, right, we are, you know, we definitely, we got to work on our self-care 100%. But again, we have to shift the fuel and we have to change the corporate culture where it's, you know, donuts and bagels and pastries. And we have to shift that because that's, really, you know, again, we're neuro neurologically vulnerable during this time period. And that is decreasing our performance that is decreasing our cognition that is decreasing our self esteem and self confidence. And I don't want any woman, especially at this stage, as we're like emerging from like the cocoon, like a brand new butterfly, right? To struggle with that. It's unnecessary. So if you're listening to this podcast and you work with the company, or if you have any connections to, you know, to bring this in, whether it's through leadership development or HR, I mean, there's so many functions where all of this is important. Um, if you're happier, you're 40% better salesperson. It could be through the sales function, customer service, right? The Keto Green Companion Guide is something that can actually be a foundational piece of a very simple yet profound and effective corporate wellness program. Yes. Yeah. I, I hope so. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is so exciting. And, and you mentioned, Anna, you mentioned that your publisher has been wonderful. They put in all these, all this color into the book, which is, you know, every author's dream, you know, to have this beautiful book and, you know, the hormone fix is, is gorgeous. So, so tell these aspiring authors that are listening about how you chose, it's Valentine Books, right? It's your publisher. How you chose them to be your partner and any tips for the aspiring author about um, how you made that decision and how you made it the right decision because it sounds like it's working out really well. It is. So um, it's very interesting, actually. So, you know, being online, you know, as I incorporated my program as it worked for me, 
I started doing small groups and online groups, um, which I call Magic Menopause Program. Uh, an agent, her name's Heather Jackson, she reached out to me. Now, I would always get emails from agents like, oh, well, you want to be an author for this or we're looking for an author on blah, blah. But she reached out and she goes, you know, um, what her letter really intrigued me. She goes, I want a, a menopause diet book. I'm like, I have it. That's my entire program is this menopause diet book, right? Like this is what works. And so I spoke with her, fell in love with her right away. And she said, you know, she had been actually, so this is uh, the universe beyond me, Catherine. But she said one of her um, friends and editors with Valentine Penguin Random House what they were having coffee. And that's when they were both saying, there's no real good menopause diet book. Like, what do we do? And so that's where she was on a mission to find me. And from there it was um, easy. I, I had it already. I created the proposal and sent it to her and she proposed it um, immediately to Marnie, who's my editor with Valentine and um, they bought it. And then I was committed to write it. Thank God for a large advance is all I can say. <laughs> Cause it is challenging to write a book and I wanted it, you know, I felt like at times it would pour out of me and other times it was, it was quite the challenge, but if I didn't have that, that deadline and that advance, you know, and that kind of looming over me, like I got to get this done. Um, I'd probably still be writing it and adding more to it. <laughs> And I love this because we're, we're, I know we're on the home stretch of our time here and we're kind of getting into these publishing fun nuggets. And um, I want to just, we, we had that nugget about how a book can start a movement, right? This whole idea of building a community. Um, but the next nub nugget that's specific to publishing is that, you know, a publishing journey on the traditional path starts with a great agent you know, that believes in your work and your message and then leads to a proposal, which then leads to you know, the accountability of having to write the book. Um, so on that note, can we talk about, you know, when you were at those moments where it was just, oh my God, did you ever like just want to return your advance? Like, it, you know, I, I've talked to some authors where they're just like, I can't do it. You know, and they do crazy things like, you know, book up a, a plane to China, which you wouldn't want to do right now, but you know, a long flight <laughs> so that you're stuck somewhere and trying to, you know, you for, or they go to a cabin in the woods what were, what are some of your tips for getting past the, like, I don't know if I can squeeze this out of me right now? Yeah, definitely. And I think it's that those times of complete discipline and isolation. So because of my whole keto green, I do a lot of fasting period when I'm stuck periods of fasting, but I also had a collaborative writer, ghostwriter, um, who like I was on the phone with weekly and we spent a week together and she lived my life with me. And so um, to take it also from my medical speak to a very conversational, readable, you know, um, um, format that it really worked. And sometimes I had these long cases and stories in there, like, you know, medical case stories and slash and burn, slash and burn. I was like, no. And, and, but I totally get it at the end. You know, and so that was really good. We get the content without all the uh, technicalities that, you know, mm. only excites a few of us. <laughs> yeah. And that's a, a fun nugget in, in and of itself is that you have to be ready to let go of much of your content because writing is actually more about taking away, just like creating a sculpture is more like, you know, starting with this big block and taking away as opposed to building. Um, but you, you also mentioned this complete focus and fasting, which I want to loop back to and an accountability partner. And so I will have all those kind of listed out in the show notes, but let's talk about this fasting because it kind of combines these nuggets that are around your work and actionable, um, health, um, things that people can do like action steps for feeling better, having better cognitive performance and so on. And then we've had these um, nuggets about, you know, the, the writing and publishing journey, but fasting kind of has come across in both of those areas. And I've heard sometimes that fasting can, can often not work for women. So I wanted to talk just about that. And then we'll close with, you know, where people can find you and, and all the wonderful products you have. And of course your books, but um, let's talk about that whole fasting thing for women, because I think it's yeah. somewhat controversial. It is, and but it, it's absolutely necessary. Again, especially perimenopause to through postmenopause, it is 
essential that we fast. And um, I really think that's a myth, but we can do fasting wrong, right? So we can water fat. I mean, there's many ways to fast. And in the hormone fix, I have my clients do a three day fast. And usually it's with a protein supported by protein shakes, especially first time fasters. I want a lot of alkalinizers on board and I want to support your detoxification pathways. But then moving into a water fast becomes easier and easier. So extending your time period between dinner and breakfast, just with that intermittent fasting, but also doing some extended fasting. And that is really when we get into this state of autophagy and we get we start eating off the unhealthy cells that are problematic, right? And like the cancerous cells or precancerous cells. They, uh, through fasting, we can really boost our immune system and boost our defense system and also increase the diversity of our microbiome. But as women, we have to go into it hydrated. We have to go into it at a time where we're mentally ready to and establish really healthy practices. And the hormone fix, I give that daily checklist. And before I even suggest fasting, I want you to really have these principles and practices down. You know, your sleep hygiene routine, your... Uh, morning rituals and you know really a good healthy uh, certainly an alkaline urine pH before you hit some fasting so that I know your body's supported and you're not gonna uh, struggle or unnecessarily do any do any harm but we are all designed to be able to fast and and certainly especially as we get older we're more metabolically efficient and should fast more often well, it's interesting. I know that right down the road from Emory Hospital is the um, uh, Yerkes Center, you know, where they have research monkeys. with primates. And I don't think they have rhesus mon- monkeys there, but I remember looking, reading through that study of the rhesus monkeys, which are very similar genetically to humans and how they had the rhesus monkeys that had strict calorie restriction. And then the ones that were kind of just um, feasting all the time and looking at the ages. Now they were the same age, chronologically speaking, but the pictures, you could just look at them when one looked, you know, 15 years um, older than the other, just because they had been feasting. And I'm like, okay, well, that's, that was interesting. So listeners look that up. It's really so true. It's so true because when you're feasting, you have higher glucose, higher insulin, and that accelerates aging with fasting and getting keto green. You have more insulin sensitivity, lower glucose, and you know, it's definitely healthy aging. This is such good stuff. So we'll, we'll finish with you sharing your websites, where people can find you, follow you, um, find out about the books, find out about the companion guide, corporate folks, get this and, and put this into your wellness program. So Anna, please um, share all of that information. Thank you. Thank you. So um, my website's dranna.com and we have dranna.com forward slash keto green book. So there'll be resources there. And then you'll be able to you know, really join me on Facebook or Instagram. And um, please uh, let me know how you like keto green 16 and the hormone fix. Thanks for having me, Catherine. Thank you so much. And I'll put those links to the Facebook community and the other links in the show notes page. And Keep up your wonderful work. You are an inspiration to all of us and we appreciate you so much. Thank you.